All right, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSUFCU's Financial Education Seminar Series. We sincerely appreciate you all joining us this evening, and we're so excited to bring you this seminar series virtually. Now, these presentations were created with you in mind with the intention to give financial education on a number of relatable topics and to help your knowledge, to help expand your knowledge of finances. Now, each of these events will be hosted by a member of our financial education department, like me, or one of our amazing partners, connecting you with resources in our community. And we have a number of diverse presentations planned for you this year, and you can explore and register for them by visiting us at www.msufcu.org forward slash events. Now, tonight's event is being recorded, so if you would like to rewatch it, you're able to do so from our YouTube channel, or you can share the link with anybody who may have been unable to attend. Now, we will have time after the presentation to answer any questions that were submitted in the chat, and this segment will not be recorded. Um, now, we will answer them in the order that we, in the order that they were received, and you can send questions at any time. Now with this, we do ask that when you are sending your messages that you do address them to all panelists. That way I can properly direct them. And once you, ha once you have sent your question, I will send you a chat to let you know that I did get it. Now tonight, we have two very knowledgeable guest speakers joining us to present on calculating and maximizing your business's value. So with that, allow me to introduce Jeff Allen, who is a CPA, principal and accredited in business valuations, and Dennis Tice, who is a CPA, Principal, and Certified Value Growth Advisor at Maynard Costarison. Welcome, Dennis and Jeff, and thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you two introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit more about Maynard Costarison? Yeah, so thank you, Lauren. Um, like Lauren mentioned, uh, I'm Jeff Allen. I am a, a partner here at Maynard Costarison. I actually kind of head up our consulting services niche, where we focus a lot on strategy and planning, risk management, um, litigation support, data analytics, and really kind of one of the areas near and dear to my heart, which is transactional services, which includes business valuations. And uh, so I've been doing this for, for many years now. I uh, actually spent time uh, in public accounting as an auditor, uh, left public accounting for a few years, became a corporate controller, and uh, back in public accounting, helping clients uh, basically find out how to work through their exit planning strategies and uh, helping them determine value ahead of time and being able to uh, really help them to both calculate and maximize business value. Hence the title of our, our topic tonight. So, um, and I'll go ahead, Dennis, if you wanna introduce yourself real quick too, make sure, I'll take it away. Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, thank you, Jeff. Um, yes, uh, Dennis Tice, uh, I um, about, uh Six years ago, I, uh, I I wanted to dig in a little deeper with clients and uh, in, 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 along the lines of, of helping them meet their their lifelong goals. Um, and uh, so, uh, as part of that, I became a certified value growth advisor. Uh, and uh, you know, come it basically uh, formalized a, a lot of what you try to do on a day to day basis, uh, but. Uh, really uh, has, has helped uh, with the overall strategy uh, and, and helping our, our clients um, deal with that strategy. And, uh, and I, I, I head up our closely held or our small to mid-sized business practice. And uh, so that's, that's predominantly where, where my day is spent and, and just one additional way that uh, we can help our clients. So I'll give it back to you, Jeff. All right, Lauren, do you have any other instructions before we get going? No, that was amazing. Thank you, gentlemen. I look forward to learning with you. All right, excellent. I wanted to make sure there were no other rules before we plowed right ahead, so thank you. All right, so uh, like we like we already kind of mentioned here, we tonight we will be talking about calculating and maximizing business value. Just gave you our introductions, but our contact information is up here as well. You can see Dennis there and myself. Uh, both very much so interested in accredited in this area of uh, business valuation and business growth valuation. And uh, so, yeah, just uh, our contact info is there, and I'm sure that Lauren will be able to share that as well. So uh, our goals today, we do have a, a kind of give you a little bit of roadmap of where we're, we're going to be headed this evening. Um, not a real, real long presentation. I mean, everybody can only take so much valuation, but uh, 
uh, give you a quick, quick little snapshot of here where we're going to be headed tonight. We're going to talk about what a, defining and talking about what a business valuation actually is um, and what it is not. There's always sometimes confusion with that, so we're going to clear that up. We're going to talk about the different types of valuations tonight as well. Um, a lot of folks don't realize there are different types of valuations, and so we want to kind of clear up some of the myths behind that and um, maybe what you might be needing in your business as you look at it in the area of valuation. We're going to do the top tens. I don't know if anyone remembers David Letterman, but he always had the top 10 and uh, we, we're going to do that today too. the top 10 business valuation questions. Guarantee it will not be as funny as David Letterman, but it, uh, it will hopefully be more helpful than what you would have learned from a David Letterman top 10. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to talk about how to grow value. Dennis is going to really expand upon that. Um, talking about some good ways to, to grow value. Uh, we're going to talk about the impact of proper succession planning. A lot of folks don't realize that um, succession planning is really, really important and that it can actually add value. Uh, we'll talk about unrealized value opportunity as well, and then we'll move into the six keys to maximizing value. So you get a top 10 list and six keys. I mean, that's a pretty amazing presentation if you can get both of those, right? So um, move, move right in here. What is a business valuation? Uh, simply put, the definition is not very exciting, but it does. It is simple. It is a process and set of procedures used to estimate the economic value of an owner's interest in a business. So it, it is a valuation in its truly in its simplest form is just that. It's a process and a set of procedures where we kind of come up with the equity value of an owner's business. Uh, Oops, I think I clicked the wrong way there. Let's talk about quickly the types and different levels of different valuation services. Um, we have what's called the full business valuation. And the full business valuation follows the ACPA SSVS standards number one and IRS revenue ruling 5960. And what a full business valuation is, is usually what most people would call and say that they need. They would give me a call. They'd call a trusted advisor at the firm or elsewhere, and they'd say, hey, I think I'm getting ready to sell. I need a business valuation. I need to know what this thing's worth. Or they'll call and say, hey, I think I'm going to give the business to the kids. You know, I need to know what it's worth. Apparently, there's some tax ramifications involved with that. Or they'll, they'll say that they, you know, that there's some need for evaluation. I'm going to give give or gift or something to the most trusted, you know, employee is going to take over the place. I kind of need to know what this thing's worth. So I need a business valuation. My lawyer said I need a business valuation. And this is usually where we start with the with the phone call. A full business valuation is usually very cumbersome. <laughs> um, it's anywhere between 50 to 60 page report when it's done. A lot of people don't realize that there's more to it than just math. There's a lot of um, uh, narrative that actually goes with it. There's a lot of economic research that goes with it. There's a lot of industry research that goes with it and company specific research that goes with it as well in helping to determine that value. Um, but a full business valuation uh, would take all of those factors into account. Now, saying that, um, as most people call, I say, you know, we'll talk about their situation, be like, hey, listen, I don't think you need a full business valuation. And they'll say, Oh, oh, that's good. What else do you have? And this is where we bring in what's called a calculation engagement. Now, calculation engagement still follows many of the same standards um, that are laid out in a full-blown business valuation, but it's more tailored. We, we can work with the client to really kind of help determine, you know, what areas should we focus on in valuation? Maybe some of these, you know, public company comparables really aren't necessary for you. You're just too small. So it allows us to really um, tailor down the report. It gets much shorter down in that 20 kind of 20, 25 page area. And obviously as, as it gets more concise and more defined, the cost goes down as well. So usually folks are really, really happy when they, they start scaling here. Um, and then we have kind of our, our next level of service, which we would just call consulting services. This is where we kind of have that, hey, what's a rough estimate of what my business is worth, you know? And um, we can look at, you know, look back through the historical data and we can see, hey, it, based on history, you know, it looks like maybe based on earnings for the last three to five years, we can determine a, a capitalization rate and kind of back into the value. 
I, I would say a lot of our services that we offer end up in this area, actually, because um, literally it's it's probably the least expensive service that we that we offer as well, and it produces about a six or seven page um, calculation of exhibits, basically. So you can kind of leave a lot of the narrative and the formalities out and go with that. So some people would naturally would then ask, well, why on earth would I ever need a full business valuation if we can kind of do this other kind of valuation, right? And that's a really good question. Um, sometimes, many times, actually, a full business valuation is required for certain reasons. So if we're um, going to be gifting anything to the next generation, gifting shares of the business, and we need to file a gift and estate tax return, it is required by the Internal Revenue Service to have a full business valuation. And so that would be one of the reasons. If we're dealing with some sort of shareholder dispute and something's going to end up in court, it would require a full business valuation. Really, it's kind of like who's going to be looking at it the most, and if there's going to be lots of eyes on something, then it kind of starts at that full business valuation. Fewer eyes, internal planning, kind of moving down the line, we get into consulting services. So you can kind of think of it in that in those regards and kind of in, in that direction. So um, really good questions that always come up. Uh, there's this concept, though, that we run into that uh, folks don't really realize with valuation, and it's this concept of valuation is a prophecy of the future, actually, um, and that an operating entity is actually value based on future earnings potential. So it's great when we can look at the last three years, five years, one year, six month, whatever, but clearly, you know, as an investor coming in, a hypothetical investor coming in, um, the past is very important to know, but the past isn't necessarily always indicative of the future. And so we got to remember that a, a, a buyer is be, would be looking at future earnings potential, not just the past. And so things that we can do um, to help uh, make the future less risky really helps in the valuation area. So like I said already, history is a guide to the future, but it is not the actual future. And so we've got to make sure that we're, that we're really um, thinking about that as we go. And like I said, the potential investor really wants to know what the future business will be, not what it just currently is or what it has been. So as we look into this concept of valuation as kind of the prophecy of the future, uh, we move into uh, logically the next step would be thinking about a forecast, right? Because we want to be able to look into the future. And so we need to um, be able to say, Here's where we've been, here's where we're going, and it really helps us with uh, determining that, that valuation. So it's truly a, a reliable forecast to be put together uh, will be an excellent prediction or an estimate of future events. It's not a wild guess. Unfortunately, I do know that in a, in a lot of small business atmospheres, um, you know, once we find out this concept that, wait, valuation is uh, you know, an indicator of the future, well, I think we're going to just have this explosive growth and everything's going to look amazing and therefore I'm worth 40 million now on my evaluation. Yeah, well, that's not necessarily the case. It can't be a guess. It does need to be honest and it does need to be realistic. Um, a lot of folks can get in trouble and have gotten in trouble with getting a bit too creative on some of these forecasts. And so it's really important that we, you know, keep that in mind. One good way to get that challenged, you know, to kind of make sure our forecast seems reasonable is we can have the plan challenged by peers or other departments. You know, if we want to put to, you know, it's great to go tell the accountant, hey, sales are going to go up, you know, 40%. Um, and so show me what that looks like and they'll show it to you. And then you sit down in a department meeting and the, <laughs> the sales team comes in and they're like, that's not even possible. You know, <laughs> um, that can definitely put a kink in, in the plan. And so um, as you work through a forecast and work with a evaluator on a good forecast, making sure that that plan is challenged, not only by the forecast, by the valuator, but also by your own folks internally and that it's realistic um, is really, really important. Uh, moving on, I know I promised it. So we have the top 10 question and answers here of valuation. And uh, one question we get a lot of times is, can you do a valuation for an attest client? Meaning that we also, as a firm, firm does an audit for the client or a review or a compilation can you do a uh, valuation for those types of clients as well? Uh, there's a misunderstanding out there. Some will say absolutely, some will say absolutely never ever. Uh, and you're gonna find out here with many of the top 10 questions and answers that the answer, actual answer is it depends. 
Um, usually kind of a rule of thumb is the answer is yes, if the valuation does not affect the financial statement numbers in any way, meaning in this case that maybe um, I'm a shareholder and I'm selling my shares to Dennis and Dennis is buying them directly from me. The company's not involved at all. The answer in that case is usually yes. Uh, the same firm could do the valuation. Now let's say that I'm going to sell my shares back to the company. The answer in that case is no, because the company is now involved in the transaction and we can't have the independence issues. So I know it's kind of a general rule of thumb, but it's kind of good to go by usually. Um, can you value less than 100% of a business? Absolutely. You can value all the way down to whatever fractional percentage you want to value down to. And it's actually extremely common that we value less than 100% of a business. Um, many times we have physicians offices or we have um, you know, different you know, ty types of entities that well, there's multiple owners and somebody is ex somebody's always exiting and someone's always leaving. Um, and so absolutely, somebody might only own 2%, somebody might own 20%. And it's uh, part of the valuation process is knowing how to properly discount those cash flows as we come into that. So yes, we, you can always value less than 100% of a business. Get this one a lot. I can't afford a full valuation. Holy smokes, that thing was not what I expected. That sounds really expensive. Can you do something less? And of course, the answer is yes. And I think working with a good valuation professional will help you to determine the real need there. And you know, getting a, a 60 page report of something that doesn't you don't understand is not always helpful. Um, and so clearly, you know, kind of looking at those tiers that we talked about a moment ago, finding out exactly what is needed and who will need it. Um, is very, very important. How long does it take to complete evaluation? Here, here's my uh, magic answer again is it depends. Uh, a full valuation, obviously, with the amount of report writing involved, it is very cumbersome and it takes a long time to do. Um, it can take easily two to three weeks to work on that type of project. Moving down, if we're doing that kind of that rough estimate, it can usually be done in just a few days. So uh, keep that in mind. How much lead time do you need to schedule a valuation? Um, usually, the rule of thumb is um, plan on at least a kind of a two week window before we, anybody could really get going on anything. And um, that's that's usually a safe window. And those are kind of the windows that we're seeing uh, right now uh, and that we're promising our clients. Aren't there free valuation tools on the web? Oh boy, I love this question. Uh, Yes, there are plenty of free valuation tools on the web. Um, but the uh, one of the big things that we would caution about on using the free tools is absolutely go ahead, use it, spot check if you want to. Um, but there, the valuation world is full of assumptions and it's full of subjective data. And uh, just typing stuff into the computer on a free valuation tool means it's just going to spit out something. Um, based on whatever you put in. It's not going to challenge anything. It's not going to question anything. It's not going to say, hey, did you think about this? Did you think about that? And so, um, you know, in that case, you get what you pay for it. And so you might spit out something that spits out a value that says it's worth, you know, $25 million when really it's worth $250,000. And so you never sell the place because you never, you're always asking too much or vice versa. So, yep, they're there and they might be good uh, spot check tools. Um, but it'll never replace um, truly the quality of a professional. Uh, number seven, are minority shares less valuable? I only own 5% of the business. Is it less valuable than the guy that owns the other 95%? The answer, uh, unfortunately, if you're in this, in this situation is yes. Minority shares usually are less valuable. And that just goes by saying that if, if, if I can't single-handedly make a big decision to sell the company, its assets, or do something like that, my say is not worth as much, therefore my share is not worth as much. So generally speaking, minority shares are less valuable. Not always, but almost always. Do you need to hold an ABV credential to do a business valuation? So if I'm looking for a evaluator, do I have to use somebody that's accredited? And uh, many people are surprised to find that the answer is no. Uh, you do not need to be accredited. You do not need to be an ABV and you do not need to be a CPA. Um, anybody can do evaluation actually. But unfortunately, um, just going with anybody also means that you do have the risk of, you know, do they know what they're doing? Um, what are the risks of using this person? And whether you be ABV or any other sort of uh, valuation credentialing, uh, it demonstrates that exams have been passed, that there's some sort of, uh, you know, basic knowledge that has been uh, demonstrated 
and uh, should be utilized. ABV is not the only credential out there. There's plenty of others as well, but um, always looking to make sure that you have somebody credentialed if you're going to be uh, not using that free tool is a good, uh, good piece of advice. What if I'm not sure what I need? We get this one a lot. Uh, again, call and we can talk and or you can talk to others as well, but making sure that somebody walks you through what you really need is extremely important, important rather than just guessing. Uh, the last question here in my top 10, how can I get the absolute best price when I sell my business? And this is obviously the million dollar question, right? Um, how do I get the be absolute best price when I sell my business? And like we said, remember valuation is forward looking, but based on where you've been. So um, we're gonna go into that. Dennis is actually gonna talk about how to grow value here in a minute. And so I'm actually just gonna segue over to him and kind of let him kind of kind of uh, kind of answer this number 10 question for us too. So uh, Dennis, I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right, well, thank you very much, Jeff. I really appreciate that. And uh, uh, for our participants, if, if uh, you haven't shot uh, Jeff a, a chat yet, uh, please do that. And I, I hope, uh, hope we're sitting on a pile of those by the time, uh, by the time I'm done talking here. Um, and, uh, you know, so how do we grow value? Uh, you know, ultimately this, uh, you know, for, for most small and mid-sized business owners, uh, this is the biggest asset that uh, that you will you will have and and you will retire on uh, and so it's a, it's even more important for uh, uh business owners than it is for uh somebody that has you know the, the bulk of their assets invested in the in the market or or somewhere else and and so um you know it is it is a very important question uh it, it is uh you know we'll we'll spend the next several minutes talking about uh uh different concepts here um, but, uh, Jeff, why don't you advance to the next slide? And, uh, and, and essentially it, th this is how I view a business. I just, I, I generally bust it down into eight different areas, you know, eight functional areas that are, that are pretty different from each other. But, uh, you know, most companies that I see, you know, those slices might be a little bigger or a little bit smaller, but, but they're almost always present or should be present. And so, um, you know, uh, in the in the lower right hand corner, you have planning and leadership. Those those two functions are are pretty much overarching, um, and uh, and and also sit on top of the, the remaining six. You know what I would call you know more operational type uh, areas or functions, and. Uh, and you know, so and a, and a component of that uh, planning and leadership exists inside each one of those uh, one of those other functions as, as well. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because uh, you know, if it, 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 different people have different personalities, right? So uh, from like a planning and leadership, oftentimes somebody that's really good at that has a dominant personality. If you if you look at a, a disc profile, uh, the other end of the spectrum is probably a supporter, uh, which is uh, you know uh, most likely uh, you know people that are that excel at uh, you know people in operations. Uh, you know your compliant people are your are your finance and legal and and uh, marketing and sales are are generally your inf influencers. So. Or you know, people gravitate towards that. So it, it's no wonder that uh, you know there's always an inherent challenge in getting your entire operation to to work well with each other when, when uh, you know, different personalities handle uh, different things uh, in, in in different fashions. Um, you know, each one of these areas has their own risk and, and quality factors. So so a lot of what we'll talk about um, will be uh, you know how do we how do I we identify um, and and control and mitigate risk of our overall company, and uh, you know so we have uh, you know I, you know you can see there we have a current state and a and a future state. Um, you know that the the first thing and uh, it, it, we need to address what um, you know where do we where do we currently sit, um, Jeff? If you want to uh, click there, um, you know so. Uh, you know, what Jeff was talking about uh, on the business valuation is, is very heavily weighted on the quantitative inputs on the, on the left hand side there. Lots of, lots of numbers. Um, 
you know, he did, he did mention, uh, you know, company research and, and, and things of that nature. And yes, that's all, that's all part of it. it, it but, but a lot of times when people talk value, they, they, they're talking about it. They dumb it down to an even a multiple and, uh, and, you know, or basically some, some variation of what your cash flow is. And it's just, you know, when to get to the end of the, uh, you know, to actually execute on a, on a sale, um, oftentimes there's some level of due diligence that's, that's in involved in that process. And, um, and, you know, that digs into all of those qualitative type things, um, some of the numbers as well. Um, but, uh, they, they spend, you know, most due diligence teams will spend a lot of time digging in on the, on the uh, more qualitative, uh, type aspects, you know, the, how you handle things and what systems are in place to, uh, to, uh, you know, address risk and keep your quality high and all of that. So, so, um. You know, from a qualitative standpoint, what we like to do is a, a very robust SWOT, um, you know, strengths, uh, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and threats. And, uh, you know, we do that in a couple of different ways, uh, but, uh, but essentially knowing what your strengths are and knowing where you're vulnerable, what your, your weaknesses are, is very important into getting to the right-hand side of the page here. So, um, we, we, so we, we take that qualitative assessment combine it with all the quantitative things that, that Jeff was talking about to come up with a baseline intrinsic value. And, and really what that, what that means is, is what a buyer would pay for your cash flows, assuming a certain level of risk inside that, inside that organization. And generally the, you know, the more risk you have, the, re, you know, the, the, the less that somebody's willing to pay for that organization. So, um, you know, essentially, when when we look at risk, um, uh, the buyer views that is every, the higher the risk, the more likely that the cash flow that exists right now is going to go away uh, uh, more quickly or or sooner than than uh, than it would with an organization with lower risk. And and since they're buying your cash flow, um, and that's a, a strong determinant, and and what. Uh, uh, you know what what they'll they're willing to pay it it has a, a significant impact on on the overall price so um so as uh, when when you can approach it many different ways but as, as part of our process what we like to do is basically come up with that baseline intrinsic value it it helps us um you know you know see see where the you know the range of value is and then in addition it also helps with the you know help uh it, it helps go, go through the process of um you know when you want to make changes what's what's the biggest bang for your buck and then you can you can uh, try to figure that out or at least have that information available as far as the Dennis. future state goes uh, did you have Dennis, a question yeah, Dennis, I, yeah i was just going to ask you you know what in in some of these really small small business you know environments um is it kind of safe to say that um, one of the biggest risks is a lot of times just the owner themselves, you know, kind of playing, wearing lots of different hats. Yeah, uh, you know, and and one of one of the examples that I have here as far as is risk is uh, and probably the biggest one. And I'll, and I'll just expand on what you're saying there, but but you know, essentially, if if the if the owner or key management are walking out the door with the majority of uh, of the knowledge, uh, or, or you know, the the less they leave. With everybody else there, the more value they take with them, and the less the business is worth. So, um, I and and it's inherently difficult in a in a the smaller the organization is to you know to transfer that information in, into the business, keep it there, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, galvanize their their systems and and things like that with with the knowledge um, that 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 seasoned owner has. And so, you know, some, uh, you know, it's, it's always a risk and it's, and it's generally something that's on the due diligence, um, you know, checklist for lack of a better term on, uh, you know, how much is walking out the door. And the more there is may you know, certainly keep it from even being a saleable entity, um, in, 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 a, in and of itself. So a uh, couple, couple other examples I'd, I'll just throw out there. Uh, one would be. You know, just in the in the sales area, maybe customer concentration, just having, you know, way too many sales with one, you know, 
if that one customer leaves, that causes a lot of risk to our cash flow because it's you know 20, 30, 40, or more percent of that. You're going to take a hit on value as a you know as a result of that. Um, in in comparison to somebody that's got 20 customers at five percent on the on the other other end of the spectrum, and then also you know uh, another example would be just ability to scale. You know, are your systems in in uh, uh, top order so that you know that in any you know, generally somebody that's looking to to purchase uh, an organization is looking to grow that organization do what they do well at a higher level and um and so if if uh, your systems are in a in the sh um, you know in uh, very good shapes high, in very high quality then uh it, it's likely to attribute more value to the to uh, the you know on the actual sale so, and, and, and vice versa, the more archaic your systems are, the more difficulty you're going to have scaling that business and the more uh, you're, you're going to lose um, on, on overall value um, when, it, when it comes deal time. So, um, so, as far as the future state goes, you know, we like to develop a roadmap. Uh, based on the quantitative and qualitative assess assessments that we that we've done, try to figure out where the biggest bang for the buck is. Um, uh, determine the level of, of commit, uh, commitment, um, and, and we hope that that level of commitment is high. Uh, it, it, uh, because it, it, to be successful, um, or most successful, um, it, it, you need high energy, um, some dollar investment, and, and most importantly, time. Um, and then, uh, and then, obviously, the, the end result is to, to try to in, incorporate, uh, uh, you know, or maximize that value through the incorporation of what you've done. Over a, a period of time. So, so go, go to the next slide, Jeff. Okay. So, what are we talking about here as far as, you know, potential impact? And, and I would ask you, you know, not necessarily to look at the numbers here because, uh, you know, I think this is an example from a $30 million manufacturer and, and could be completely irrelevant to you. But uh, so, so look at this as a photo, not as a, not as a, you know, a, a, a bunch of numbers. Um, and when we when we do our upfront assessment, um, what we what we generally do is it, we rate a lot of different things on a on a scale of zero to ten. You know, ten is uh, you know you do it as well as a, a you know a world class company, um, and zero you don't do it at all. A lot of times you fall in in between. You know most companies that are interested in doing this kind of stuff are pretty good, and uh, but there's a lot of things that aren't in place too. So the what we try to do is is we try to physically um, you know, again, snapshot in time, where, where, where's the current state in this example, the current state was, uh, you know, at, at 50 here, a five out of 10. And, and, and we, we believe, uh, that, that it, the, the blue area here is if you just reduce the risk inside the organization and, and make this, uh, make your company a higher quality company with less risk, um, you're making those cash flows, uh, more predictable into the future, and as a result, um, uh, you know, a, a buyer would be willing to pay more for you. Um, as far as the uh, the orange goes, uh, which which is another entire slice of, of value there um, that that is available, you can uh, you can look at that as if okay, we've reduced our risk. We're 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 regularly talking and planning and. And strategizing over over what we're going to do, you know, not only today, but, but over the next, you know, next few years and, uh, you know, a higher quality company with lower risk, making better decisions over time is going to make more money. Um, or, or more likely to make more money. And, um, so, so the orange there is the value that is generated from improved results from the blue. Uh, which is reduction of risk and and overall um, uh, predictability of, of of cash flows. So uh, that's that's where we're, it just to give you a, it, you know an idea there. Um, you know uh, you know the, over on the right hand side you know that would be if if you know, on average they're an eight out of ten, which is pretty tough to attain. So most companies can move right from that fifty in this example, you know, to a sixty into a seventy or so. Um, and and still get, gain quite a bit of value over over time. So that's that's the name of the game. Next slide, please. 
Okay, just this is just another way of of, of looking at uh, you know the opportunity that that is out there by making improvements in your in your business, and you know the five point five million uh, uh, represented by the blue bar there is um, is is basically that baseline intrinsic value, and so. Um, you know, what we like to do first is we like to look at what, what we call foundational risks to the organization. Uh, and I mentioned a couple of them before, uh, you know, the, the one would be uh, the owner taking their, their skills with them. Uh, another would be, you know, customer concentration. You know, it takes a lot of time to, to physically get over those. Um, but when you do, that leaves a lot of, or, or, or produces a lot of value inside the business. So we try to focus on, <clears throat> excuse me, we try to focus on those things first um, because uh, they, they present, uh, you, know, a, 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 you know, a significant risk uh, to, to the organization. Then, uh, then you know, we go that from there and, and, and normally, you know, that might take a year, it might take, you know, uh, two or more years to, you know, to physically um, you know, uh, reduce significantly reduce the risk in those areas. Um, but, um, but, uh, after that, then you, you move on to, you know, your next level of risk generally still pretty important. Um, uh, you know, uh, have the ability to, uh, to, to, uh, gain value or, or, uh, um, you know, increase the value of the organization. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, so you'd be looking at, you know, after your first wave, you know, you know, potentially a, a 60% improvement in your overall value. You might be, you know, you could potentially be doubling in value if you, over time, you're doing what we did on the on the previous graph, making better decisions, lower risk, making more money. Um, and and then the, the purple here represents that, you know, uh, true high class or world class, um, you know, improvement. And, uh, and those are, those are generally things that, that uh, really give you a high ability to grow the organization, ability to scale, and and that just means that that you know with your systems and all that that you can uh, that you can in, uh, in have high growth, and uh, and obviously that produces more cash flow, right? So, um, next slide, please. Okay, so that you know the the six keys to maximizing value. Um, so you know. I, I think this is the the most important, um, and and if you, if if at all possible, start years in advance of of your anticipated transaction date. You know, I, I usually tell people three to five years is is uh, pretty solid, but you know, I, I was just working with a a, a, a group of uh, in a in a medical practice, and those they're not going to be retiring for at least a dozen years. And and to me, that's the right way to approach that. If if you're going to go through this work, why not in, enjoy those improvements over a longer period of time? Give yourself more time to 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 uh, deal with them, and then exit with a um, even a bigger nest egg or or with greater ease than you would um, if if uh, you know you got the one year fire drill to to uh, to run through to to physically uh, sell your business. Number two is uh, define what success looks like for you. This is different for absolutely everybody. Uh, it can it can certainly vary by by uh, uh, personality. All business owners have different personalities. They have different strengths and weaknesses, and um, and overall, uh, you know, I, I believe that it's it it, it, it you got to look at that. You know, what what will work for you in the end, and if you if you don't have that in mind. And be working towards that over an extended period of time, then you're you're at higher risk and getting to the end, and and that's not going to meet your needs, and and uh, ultimately, you know, you may back away from a proposed transaction because of that. Um, for uh, number three, is uh, it, it, we we really need to look at the value and the risks um, through the buyer's eyes, and. Um, and and try to mitigate as much of that risk as you possibly can uh, to to physically drive up your value. And I think I think you know from from that um, you know you just look at the the things that might potentially reduce your cash flow in the future. You're performing well, but but what keeps you performing well? What kind of activities will will spot those um, 
those uh, issues out there, those risks, uh, maybe change in markets or, or uh, uh, product obsolescence or what have you, that is going to, um, you know, uh, make it a, more of a challenge for you to, to uh, continue to grow. Um, that number four is get a clear picture of the current state. And, and I think, uh, you know, we, we talked a bit about this before, but I think you need to gather your management team together, uh, have a good discussion with individuals that, um, you know, have, have very, are very knowledgeable about your business. You're, 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 you know, no matter how good you are, you still have things that you can improve on. And, and you, you just need to have the, you know, the right people um, uh, in communication to, to help discover what those things are so that you can work on, work on those o over time. Um, number five is, uh, you know, you, this is going to take investment of resources, uh, you know, to reduce the risk and, and increase the quality. Uh, as I said before, um, it, you know, this is it just going to take, uh, you know, time in order to do that. You know, we're talking about, um, you know, uh, obviously uh, plenty of discussions with management, um, ongoing detailed planning, uh, you know, look ahead to, uh, you know, determine, uh, you know, how you want your organization to function and, and what, it, what it'll be facing. It all, it all takes time, especially if you're, if you don't spend a lot of time uh, doing that. Certainly there could be a dollar value um, of, of resource spend, but, but that will probably pale in comparison to the actual, you know, time that you need. Um, and time is, is usually most people's uh, most uh, difficult uh, resource to, to free up. So, and number six, um, you know, it, it, as I had said, uh, you know, implement robust planning, uh, you know, to achieve your goals. This doesn't happen by accident. This doesn't happen just because you work hard. Um, this happens between, because uh, you're in communication with the, the key members of your organization at, at various different levels, working across all eight functions of, of, of your business for an extended period of time. And, um, and so, you know, you accomplish a lot, you know, over, over time, but there's always more to accomplish. And the, so what I would leave you with there is, is, uh, that, you know, if, if, if at all possible grouping all, all of these six, uh, you know, together, uh, you know, I think the, the number one and number six are, are, are my most important ones, you know, start early, start as soon as you can. And, and it's going to take, you know, you know, planning in order to, in, in, in order to, uh, to, to do this, bringing in and incorporating other individuals. So, well, that, uh, those are my points that I had for the, uh, for the evening. How many hundreds of questions do we have, Lauren? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dennis and Jeff. That was an amazing presentation. I know I always love learning more about um, business and, and the background of it, how we can get our businesses to be as valuable as possible. Um, so with that, we will go ahead and close out the um, close out the recording. But if you won't be sticking around for the discussion portion, we encourage you to take our survey that will appear as soon as you close out of the um, presentation. And with that, I thank you all for joining us. I'll stop the recording and then we'll open it up for discussion.